In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how this vehicle here is a much cheaper, much lighter way of leaving a small dent on the moon than the rocket in my previous video. My aim for this week is to release an RP1 tutorial every day, so if you're not already subscribed, hit that button to be notified of when the next video drops. The Impactor Probe is nigh on identical to the previous design. The internal antenna has been removed and replaced with a Communitron set to tech level 1 and at 33 decibel milliwatts to provide adequate signal to the moon. This design also can take the same experiment and to get the most science from this probe, I've selected a thermometer, barometer, mass spectrometer, and early TV camera to be contained within the Science Core avionics unit. This is set to early avionics, with me trying to use the earliest tech that I possibly can. Now this is where things start to get a bit different. Attached directly to the avionics, I place a GCRC solid rocket motor. This will be used to perform the entire translunar injection. As it currently stands, I'll only get 2,313 meters per second of delta V from this engine. In order to get the 3,000 150 I need, I fine tune the size of the avionics, the amount of electric charge in the tank, remember to actually turn off the antenna on the probe core, which on its own adds another 600 meters per second of delta V. If I didn't stress it enough in the previous videos, remember to do this, you'll really want those gains. I finally end up with 3170 meters per second in this stage, which is plenty enough to get to the moon. Underneath the GCRC I place a ring decoupler and then a small near earth avionics unit set to a controllable mass of 0.3 five tons, which is only just enough control for this spacecraft. I place a small amount of electric charge on this and once again remove the antenna. In order to make this design light enough, you really want to be cutting away all the mass you possibly can. Attached to the avionics are four small isogrid high pressure tanks filled with fuel for four small HTP RCS thrusters placed directly onto the tanks. That concludes the spacecraft that will sit in a parking orbit of Earth. Weighing only 341 kilograms, it's much lighter than my previous design, which allows me to build a much smaller launch vehicle. The design I've gone for is somewhat of a mix between the standard and the Vanguard from my 10 early orbital rockets video, or the toothbrush rocket, the Thor Able if you so please. For the upper stage I place an avionics unit on top set to control 3 tons, keeping the antenna in place so I can control the rocket during the launch before the probe's antenna is deployed. I did forget to put any electric charge on this, but drawing from the spacecraft tank should be okay. Underneath, an isogrid high pressure tank sized so that the 1958 orbital rocketry config for the AJ-10 early engine, the AJ-10 42 slightly overburns at 154 seconds, four seconds more than it's rated for. The avionics for the first stage is set to control 60 tons and is filled with 1000 electric charge. Under this, another isogrid tank, this time not pressurized, as the LR79 set to the S3D config I place at the bottom in a delta boat tail does not require a high pressure tank to function. I fill the tank with the fuel for this engine and fine tune it so that the engine is burning for its rated time of 182 seconds. And with that, the rocket is finished. If you want to just grab this craft for yourself, it will be uploaded to my Patreon, link in the description and the card now. To launch this, I set the moon as the target and use MechJeb's ascent guidance to put me into a 180 km orbit in the plane of the moon. This launch vehicle doesn't rely on a kickstage, so MechJeb is perfectly capable of doing this. Costing two thirds of the price of yesterday's design, this will be built much faster and does not use any balloon tanks, so you also save on cost there. Plus the rocket is nearly 60 tons lighter, so can be launched on a smaller pad. However, the downside sides to this cheaper, lighter mission become apparent when trying to actually get to the moon. In order to make the TLI stage light enough that a single GCRC can perform it, the stage has no control. Early controllable avionics are super heavy after all, so once the engine is ignited, you have to hope that you are not cursed by residuals, as once it's completed its burn, you have no way of performing any course correction. Having the engine perform the burn still attached to the probe also saves on using a decoupler. This design really is all about cutting all the rubbish that you possibly can. I found setting my trajectory to fly past the moon at about 1 million meters and starting the burn with 16 seconds to the node worked well for this craft, and more times than not, I got an impact course. The near earth avionics on the stage below the GCRC is used to orient the solid rocket motor, and before releasing, I spun the craft slightly using the RCS to try and maintain attitude with the lunar kick stage. As it's a solid rocket, the maneuver I plotted was set to use all available 3170 meters per second on the stage. You may have to play around with the maneuver in order to get this right. This design probably is the better of the two, but the fact you can't make any corrections is a major downside. You'll also probably need to spend a bit more time figuring out exactly when you need to start the burn. However, the cheaper cost and reduced mass does make this a very useful rocket, especially if you went the Thor Able route to achieve first orbit. You should already have a sufficient size pad and a bit of test flight data on the engines to make them more reliable. The next video up is going to be how to make an early interplanetary probe. I've already filmed it and it should be 
releasing tomorrow. I want to thank Winterfox and the rest of my members and patrons for their support. I have been Karnassa, and I will see you later.